Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video, I'm going to take you through all of the software in the HP Mini 1151NR that's on the Verizon Wireless Network. We're going to run speed benchmarks, talk about battery life, talk about the software that comes on the netbook, and things like that. So let's start off by turning on the netbook, and we do that, if you saw the hardware video, uh, hardware tour, through this button down here, and it's kind of cumbersomely placed uh, because it's a little difficult to slide it over. And let's see how long it takes to come out of uh, Hibernate. Okay, so that was quite fast, just a few seconds uh, to come out of Hibernate. Okay, so here I am on the desktop, and the first thing that I did when I got the HP Mini out of the box is I disabled all of the visual eye candy that comes in Windows XP. Uh, this being a netbook, you want it to be as light and fast as possible, and already with one gigabyte of RAM and the 1.6 gig gigahertz Atom processor, it's pretty snappy, especially since I'm not running too many background processes. But I went into System, and I went into the Advanced tab and Performance, and I unchecked most of these items. That's why you get that kind of old school uh, Windows 98 look when there, you know, there's no visual eye candy turned on. So for a browser, I'm using Google Chrome because Google Chrome really gives you the maximum amount of screen space uh, when, you're, when you're browsing the web because it takes away the status bar on the bottom of the screen. And it also is quite lightweight, which is good for a netbook, which doesn't have as much power as you know, a dual core or quad core machine that you may be using. Now, right now, I'm connected to uh, the Wi-Fi network in my office here, and I'm going to disconnect that and show you what it's like to connect to the Verizon EVDO network. So I'm going to go into the uh, network configuration, and I'm going to disable the wireless uh, area network. Now, I should note while I'm doing this, the purpose of the EVDO connection is not so that you will use this all the time because you're limited in the amount of data that you can use. And I'll talk about the pricing plans in a minute. Um, it's so that when you don't have Wi-Fi, such as you're in the back of a taxi cab or you're at the park or you're just, you know, on in the back of a car, or you're in a passenger seat or something like that, you have Internet access. So the way that we do this is you have to launch this program first. It's called VZ Access Manager. It's kind of unfortunate that you always have to have this program open. In fact, if you... Uh, minima or exit this program, the connection won't work. So it starts off by saying, please wait while powering on the wireless device. And this is what you have to go through every time you want to get um, access via Verizon's network. And yeah, it takes a few minutes, which is a little bit annoying. But again, you're not going to be using this feature uh, as much as, as Wi-Fi. Okay, here we are, and now I'm going to click Get Access, and I've got limited signal here in the office, so uh, the speeds aren't going to be that great, but we're going to do some benchmarks, and I'll talk about exactly how fast it can possibly go. So I clicked Get Access, and it's going to take another uh, few few moments here to, to get uh, the, everything working. Okay, now it's showing me the kind of signal that I have, so I only have one bar, and in a moment, I'll be able to click Connect, and... Here we go, connect, and it'll take another three or four seconds and we'll finally be connected to the network. There it is. It says connected to broadband access revision A. So we are connected to Verizon's network right now. We're not on Wi-Fi, so let's see how fast things are. And again, keep in mind that we are using, um, we're, we're in an area where there isn't great uh, cell phone coverage. So let's go to YouTube. Let's see how fast that loads. What you're going to notice is things come on the screen very fast. It is a pretty fast connection. Um, let's go to the the benchmark site, speedtest.net, which was fantastic for uh, measuring your broadband speed. And let's see the kind of speeds that we're getting right now in the office over the Verizon network. So click on that. Let me scroll down a little bit so I can see the little meter. Okay, so it looks like we're going to max out at about 1.3 megabits per second, which is pretty good. Um, and we're going to do the upload speed, which is going to be much, much slower. You don't want to upload YouTube videos or anything like that while on the Verizon network. And we're getting a paltry um, 0.15 megabits per second, and I'm actually surprised by how low that is. How fast can this go? Well, uh, this afternoon I tested it in a 
an area with great cellular reception and I got actually 1.9 megabits per second down and about 0.5 megabits per second up, which is quite good. Uh, if, if I were to tether my 3G phone to my laptop, I usually get about 1.1, 1.2 megabits per second at best. So the fact that the Verizon network can get up to 1.9, that is very encouraging. And again, you're going to be using this connection for casual web browsing. You're not going to be using it for downloading from iTunes or for uploading movies or anything like that. And so it's really quite adequate and even even pretty extraordinary um, for being able to get this wireless coverage anywhere. Now, what about the effect on battery life? Well, the battery life, if you're not using any, any wireless, is about two and a half hours with this three cell battery. You can get the six cell battery option on the Verizon netbook, although it costs an additional $130, which probably isn't worth it considering that the netbook is $200 itself. Now, if you're using Wi-Fi, expect to get two hours of battery life. If you're using the EVDO connection full time, um, expect about an hour and a half it's definitely it definitely uses more battery than does Wi-Fi because it requires more power to get um, a cellular signal than it does a short-range Wi-Fi signal in terms of pricing you have to pay for data of course on the Verizon network it's forty dollars for um, let's actually go to the website it's forty dollars for the 250 uh, megabyte plan which is really not enough especially if you plan on doing some email attachment downloading and that sort of thing. But for the five gigabyte plan, it's only $20 more. So if you're getting this device, you're likely gonna wanna go with the, uh, the higher tier plan. So let's go to netbooks. And things are very snappy. And plans and accessories, and here it is, the HP Mini. And here it is. The, the unit costs $199, it's subsidized, and you get these choices of plans. There's no unlimited plan, it seems, uh, which makes sense. That would be a very big toll on Verizon's network if you could you know, download and upload an unlimited amount of data. So overall, I'm quite excited about the Verizon HP Mini Netbook. It's their first attempt at a netbook, and I think they chose a really fantastic unit with great performance and excellent keyboard. And... Uh, a really nice look to it as well, although the outdoor visibility isn't so great because the screen has such a strong shine. You can see the reflection of the light uh, right there. Uh, the EVDO speeds are fantastic. The only gripe that I have is that it takes a little bit of time to connect to their EVDO network, and you can only use the VZ Access Manager to, to connect. Um, that said, if you are a mobile professional, then certainly this device may be indispensable to you. So that's it for the Verizon Wireless HP Mini 1151NR. We'll be back with some more coverage on the netbook, comparing it to the Celio Redfly, which is a Windows mobile hub that allows you to have a netbook-like experience, but for your Windows mobile device. For more on Windows mobile and mobile technology, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash pocketnowtweets. That's it for now.